Hi parents and welcome back to Kindest Milk Breastfeeding Support. I'm Regina Kincaid, I'm a midwife, I'm an international board certified lactation consultant, a mom of four, soon to be five. My YouTube channel is all about breastfeeding support and getting breastfeeding off to a good start. And I myself will be starting my fifth breastfeeding journey very soon. And in order to get breastfeeding off to a good start, I would like to look at antenatal hand expressing of colostrum today in this video and I will walk you through the process. We will look at why you may be looking at antenatal hand expressing of colostrum, when to start if you're eligible to express colostrum and what equipment you will need. The actual tutorial part of this video where I'm going to manually express some of my own colostrum for my breast will only be available on my YouTube membership program which you can access for 9.99 euros per month. You can cancel at any time. The membership program includes all the videos of my breastfeeding preparation e-course such as positioning and attachment and active milk transfer and effective latch and attachment with an actual baby which I had recorded with my fourth baby you will all be able to access that through my membership program. Antenatal hand expressing of colostrum or harvesting of colostrum has become more and more popular in recent years and the background to this is the DAME study the diabetes and antenatal milk expressing study from 2017 which was the first randomized control trial to look at the practice of antenatal hand expressing of colostrum and it included 2,593 mothers. There was a strict exclusion criteria such as um, if you've had a history of bleeding during pregnancy, a placenta previa where the placenta is covering the cervix or is near the cervix, if you've had previous medical or obstetric um, complications or uh, such as a uterine scar, so previous cesarean section scar, those mothers were excluded from the study. There's research that tells us that mothers who are diabetic in pregnancy or have type 1 or type 2 diabetes, that they are uh, less likely to breastfeed exclusively. So unfortunately, in this current pregnancy, it's the first time that I have been diagnosed as gestational diabetic, probably because I'm a little bit older this time around, I'm 39. I also have a family history of diabetes, so I had a routine oral glucose tolerance test at 26 weeks and my one hour blood glucose level was higher than it was supposed to be. So since then I am checking my blood sugars four times a day and I'm following a strict diabetic diet. And so far I've been very lucky to be able to control it with diet alone. Um, but nevertheless, even if your blood sugars are well controlled during pregnancy, when you're gestational diabetic there is a small risk that after delivery your baby may have problems with their blood sugars the blood sugar of baby may be quite low and um, sometimes if um, the blood sugar cannot be maintained with just breastfeeding direct breastfeeding alone you'd be looking at supplementation so colostrum is the first milk that um, is produced from already around 16 weeks of pregnancy and it is higher in fat and protein than mature milk but nevertheless it is better than formula at stabilizing blood sugar so the idea is if you have um, a supply of colostrum available or if you have um, some antenatally expressed colostrum available then um, you can offer that uh, to the baby as a supplement rather than formula. Therefore, antenatal expression of colostrum can be very beneficial for babies of diabetic mothers or um, where there is a low 
birth weight may be expected sometimes when you have to be induced because of um, growth restriction. In those circumstances, it can be very beneficial for uh, the babies and also to increase the chances of the mother-baby pair being able to breastfeed exclusively. Of course, always check with your doctor, your midwife, your healthcare provider, whether uh, you are eligible for antenatal harvesting of colostrum and also from which gestation, so from which week of pregnancy that they would like you to start. Of course, if you are planned um, to have a cesarean section because of breach or placenta previa, then it may not be suitable for you because um, with expressing of milk and nipple stimulation, oxytocin is being released and oxytocin can also trigger Braxton Hicks or true contractions. So that's why you, it's usually advised to wait until 37 weeks of pregnancy when you're classed as full term before you start harvesting any of your colostrum. Sometimes if you leak a lot of colostrum during your pregnancy already, you can start wearing a breast shell in your bra, a sterilized breast shell in your bra, and for an hour in the morning and an hour in the evening to see if you can catch any of this leakage from around 36 weeks of pregnancy. So you wouldn't actually manually stimulate your breast yet since you've sterilized the shell you'd be able to then take a syringe and draw out the colostrum to um, store it in the freezer but usually it is advised to start from around 37 weeks of pregnancy three to four times a day for five minutes and i'll be also starting from around 37 weeks of pregnancy with the gestational diabetes comes also the higher risk of having to have an induction. So then um, at that point from 37 weeks, if the nipple stimulation uh, triggers some Braxton Hicks or some um, true contractions, then at that point it is a good preparation for labor as well. During the whole process of antenatal hand expressing of colostrum, you want to stay in close um, contact with your healthcare provider or your midwife and let them know as soon as you notice anything um, abnormal such as unusual pain or you start bleeding or your baby is not moving um, as usual those are all red flags where you should contact your uh, care provider straight away.